Hammer, four-time champ, Shaquille O'Neal, in our house. Jack, thanks so much for being with us. Can you read that again in case people were in the bathroom? Yeah, scroll that up. <laughs> I mean, I mean, four-time four champ. Say it again. Four-time champ. Yeah, okay. Hall of Famer, Shaquille O'Neal. Just in case somebody was in the bathroom. Yeah, no, get out of the bathroom. Hours, so. 17 every NBA Finals. Something like that. Something like that. Yeah, it's good to have you here. It's a drinking sir. coffee, chatting it up Usually with us. Usually I don't get up for, at, you know, for, for, for people at 8 a.m., but I did it for you. I adore you. <laughs> Thank not you. you. Not him. Not, not him you. so much for this thing right here. Yes. Also, thanks okay. for 25, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, Shaq, you had many great years with the Lakers, winning three titles. The Lakers now the favorites to win the title this coming season at 3-1 to one after acquiring Anthony Davis from the Pelicans. You posted this on the gram, Photoshop of AD and LeBron <laughs> celebrating a title. So let's start with you. Should the Lakers be favorites to win it all this coming season with everything you saw happen this last week? I, the favorites, no. You know, you still have to go with Golden State. Houston's still going to be up there. They're up there. They're back in uh, uh, talks. They're back in contention. I like Kuz, AD, and LeBron, the first three. There's still a lot of speculation of some other people that's coming. You hear Kimba Walker. You hear uh, possibly Kyrie. I haven't heard Kawhi's name thrown around. So we should wait to the end of the summer before we start saying, this team's going to win, this team's going to win. However, the, the three of Kuzma, uh, Davis, and LeBron, I like that. If you had to choose between spending all the available cap space on, call it Kyrie, or spreading that money around and bringing in a guy like Danny Green, bringing in Patrick Beverly, bringing in three rotation, a couple starting level players, where the league is right now, where LeBron and AD are each differently in their careers, what do you think? If the Lakers had those two options, what would be the better course of action? Well, the Lakers are used to winning, winning multiple championships. Uh, if I was the owner, I wouldn't care about the salary cap. I would like to try to get back to prominence. Now, the team that's been dominating the league for the past four or five years, they have three superstars. Usually it's a one-two punch, mm -hmm. but they have a one-two-three punch. So I got to go for the three punch. If, if, if it's Kimball Walker, I'm going to try to get him. If it's uh, Kawhi Leonard, I'm going to try to get him. I'm not just going to try to build guys around there so we could possibly win. I'm going to guarantee we win like the Golden State owner did. When he said, okay, we already got Stephen Clay. I want to guarantee a couple more runs. Let me go out and get KD. So, me, if I was the owner, I would guarantee that we would win. And it's only money. Hey. Sure. Well, if it's you, <laughs> go it's over the cap. Money. It's only money. Well, let's take it just one step back. What was your reaction to, to getting Anthony Davis in the first place? I mean, I thought, I mean, I knew that it was going to happen. I thought it was going to happen last season, but it didn't. You know, things got a little messy. But I knew it was definitely going to happen because, you know, both sides kept kept pushing. And, you know, New Orleans waited, and they felt they got what they wanted for Anthony Davis. So now they have a young nucleus with uh, a, a Mr. Ball, and they got the Zion kid coming in, and they still got some pieces there. But but they're definitely a young team. But I knew it was going to happen, and uh, hopefully he can, he can, you know, live up to that pressure because it is pressure when you play for a, a prestigious organization. I remember when I first got there, first thing Jerry West did, he sat me down in the stands, and it was beautiful how they set it up because the building wasn't really lit, and then psh, the lights come off. No, first he said, listen, I know you like rapping and mm -hmm. doing movies and doing all that stuff. All that's good, but when it's said and done, you could either be a bus or you could be dish. <laughs> you see the light on magic. <laughs> you see the light on wood. He said you could be one of the greatest players and your name could go up there. So that's the type of pressure that he's on. So, you know, we've been letting him slide by not making the playoffs now. But now, you got to win now. Well, let me, be, he, people may forget, our younger viewers may forget, but before you got to the Lakers, you were in the discussion to be the best player in the league already. You'd been yes. to an NBA Finals. You, you had super high level success already. You had knocked... Michael Jordan's team out in the playoffs. I know the NBA burnt the tapes and pretend that series didn't happen. Right. It happened. You guys beat them. And so you were in a different position than AD is. AD has played five second round playoff games in his career. So now he's with the best player alive. He's with the greatest franchise in the history of the league. Can uh, You just touched on it, but can you talk about what that pressure is for a guy who's been playing, not in obscurity, but in New Orleans where, without real expectations? Chris knows this. When you're deemed as a great player, you're expected to win. 
and no excuses. Nobody cares if you're hurt. Nobody cares if the other teammates ain't stepping up. You're expected to win. Now in L.A., when you go to L.A. and you play with the best player in the world, you're expected to win. When you play for a franchise such as Boston, L.A., even Miami Heat, you know, you can throw it to them, and Golden State, you're expected to win. Ever since LeBron was 14 years old, I've been very close as far as the people around him was very, very aware. But when I came to Cleveland, I was there doing an event. You were LeBron's teammate. And you gave me some of the greatest insight I had ever heard about LeBron. You were the first person I ever heard say that he was a basketball genius. He was a savant. You were talking about how he memorized the certain sets and would call them out. Even the coaches sometimes, he was ahead of the coaches. In practice, he would call out things. How does basketball work in Los Angeles with LeBron James in his second year with Anthony Davis? Are you a pick and pop? Are you a pick and roll? How would you run them from an offensive standpoint with those two superstars playing together? First thing, I would come in, I would show them a tape of Showtime. So this is what L.A. basketball is all about. They miss a shot, we run it. We ain't calling no plays, right? That's the first thing I'll do. So I want everybody to get in perfect shape because we run it. Now if we got a run set offense, LeBron going to have the ball, pick and pop. You know, we're going to give Cool some touches like this. You know, Kimba's there. We're going to let him go to work. But, you know, a lot of times when everybody's in the same flow, you don't run plays. Like, if you know anything about the triangle, our rules was you miss, we run it. Slow it down, get it in the diesel, cut, boom, 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 boom. They start hacking, shacking diesel. He don't make the free throws, don't even throw it to him. Let Kobe get it the whole fourth quarter. So they're going to have to have some type of conversation, you know, how they want it to flow. But if I'm them, I'm going to get back to running. This is L.A., baby. We're not walking it up. We're running. We're flying, period. Are these two, Anthony Davis and, and uh, LeBron James, already the, the best duo in the NBA right now? No. Who? I still like uh, Steph and Clay. Steph and KD. Just out of respect. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, you know, not out of respect, just, you know, out of, uh, of what they've done for the past four, five, six years. And, of course, on, on paper, when you put LeBron and, and Clay together, it looks fabulous, but they haven't really stepped on court yet. And, and, and who knows? I mean, well, LeBron is the type, he'll always get along with everybody, but this is my first time hearing the, the CP3 and James Harden beef. I never knew that. Mm -hmm. See, I never knew it, so... You know, a lot of things can go on. A lot of things will go on. We won't know until it really happens. What is realistic expectations in the NBA? Because we've seen guys, we've seen LeBron go from Cleveland to Miami, Miami back to Cleveland, Durant over. What's the realistic time as far as expectation? First 20 games, all-star break, 30 games, till we should see, you know, a, 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 a fine tuned machine offensively and defensively with AD and LeBron on the court? It depends on, on you know, how you look at it. I, I could say about 20 games, but when we learned how to be champions by Phil Jackson, he gave us a formula. And the formula was be dominant at home, be above 500 on the road, and beat the teams you're supposed to beat. So if they come in with that attitude, it should take them no time. But I mean, listen, pick. This, it's only going to be pick and pop, running, lobs. You know, it's, it's not a lot. It's not rocket science what those two have to do. They definitely know how to play. Both of them are, are very unselfish, so it should go pretty well. Let's talk about the coaching for a moment, because with no disrespect to Frank Vogel, the Lakers made this clear. He wasn't their first choice, wasn't their second choice, might not have been their third choice. You had the pleasure in your career of playing for some great coaches and some great organizations. You also played for some coaches that weren't up to that level. What, what is the biggest difference as a player, as a dominant player, between having a great coach and a coach that's finding his way? I don't want to disrespect all the coaches that I ever played for, but I knew that once I had a guy that had a resume that I believed in, then I, it would, you know, take me to the next level. Because you know this, when, when you're the main guy, things don't go right, it's going to be your fault first. Yes. Oh, you know, you missed that pass on the first time, it's going to be your fault first. Yeah, they so typically it, didn't say yeah, that about right. me. Okay, yeah, you're, you're right. My, More your free throws right, than right. that. Yeah, I understand. Okay. Yeah, you're right. right. You're right, you're right. I owe you one. So just, just, just know it's coming. So... Um, so I was I was always at the point in my career where I, I never wanted it to be about me or my fault. So a lot of times when, when coaches would say something and I knew that you really don't know what you're doing and I would do something different. Once I played for a guy like Phil Jackson, I'm like, okay, I know he know what he's talking about because I've seen this exact same thing when he was with the Bulls. Once I played for Pat Riley, you know, the great Pat Riley. So once I had coaches that had that resume, uh, I was able to get it done. However, 
I mean, you know, Tyrone Lue didn't have a great resume when he coached Coach mm -hmm. LeBron the first time, and, and they were able to win. So maybe I was wrong in my thought process. So, but Frank Go uh, Vogel is a, a a players type of coach. You know, he has great rapport with the players, and he's gonna let LeBron do what he does. And LeBron always plays the right way. So it ain't like a guy that dribbles 150 times and you know tries to take over the game. LeBron's gonna be running, kicking, doing all that stuff. Shaq, you spoke glowingly of the Lakers organization this morning. How much did what's happened this offseason, the last couple of months, surprise you, if at all, between what happened with Magic Johnson and the way Magic Johnson and Palenka's relationship sort of soured and the head coaching bungle, if you will? How much did it's, all of that sort of surprise you? It's not that I was surprised. It's just about business. Uh, a lot of times when you're dealing with business, you can't take things personal. Like, I don't take what he said personal when Randy Moss is a better receiver. Oh! Got him. Got him. <laughs> Got him. One to one. That's very good. That's no, very good. No, I like so that. It's, it's, one to one. It's, it's, uh, it's, I'll keep score. It's business. I, I wasn't there, so I don't really try to get involved with what he said, she said, but I thought that Magic Johnson was going to be treated a little better. All right, so let's let's talk about the wing dominant wing player, big man. This is something obviously you have enormous experience with. You won your four championships. Kobe was there for all three of the first three, and then you and Flash when it was young D Wade, and we I don't think the world knew quite how good he was. And you were you were an MVP an MVP the first three times an MVP candidate the second the championship with Miami Heat. How, what's the what's the hive mind? What's the synergy these two guys need to get on the same page on in order to unlock what I think you and Kobe, you did unlock certainly that second and third championship, but that first one, you were the dominant force. Kobe did his thing, and the beginning no, of that both, second season. We both were dominant forces. You just have to understand when it comes to me, I got to do what I got to do. I don't feel comfortable with myself unless it's 30, 15, and all that. But some, the times in fourth quarter when I wasn't stepping up, we all know what he did, right? Mm -hmm. But it's, it, it was.